Now, one of the other new things we need to talk about, now that we have an angular acceleration, is thinking a little more about our acceleration vector. When we first started two-dimensional motion, we talked about trajectories, and we talked about the acceleration on a trajectory. So this is an old figure here on the left. And one thing we said was that if you consider a certain point on that trajectory, this is an xy plot, that we have a perpendicular component of the acceleration, which is changing the direction, and we have a parallel component of the acceleration, which is changing the speed. So this is true for all two-dimensional motion. And now our circular motion case, the non-uniform circular motion case that we're talking about right now, is a special case of that. So you've already met centripetal acceleration, which in the plot to the right is being marked as A sub R. You also could see it as A sub uh, C for centripetal. So our centripetal motion, uh, sorry, our centripetal acceleration, remember, is only changing the direction. We had this in uniform circular motion. So this idea is old. But that is our perpendicular component of acceleration that is changing the direction and that's all that it's doing. So in the case of uniform circular motion we don't have a change in speed. So centripetal acceleration was our only component of acceleration. Now however if you do have a speed up or a slow down occurring you have a tangential component of acceleration and that's our parallel component that is changing the speed. So we now have two pieces of our acceleration. Again, the centripetal acceleration here is one we've already seen. We already dealt with it. If this is new to you, make sure you go back and watch some of the videos from the previous section because centripetal acceleration is really important to understand. It points back at the center of your circle always. That's your perpendicular component. The parallel here corresponds to the speed up, and this is the new part that we didn't have when it was uniform circular motion. So I want to talk you through the tangential acceleration a little bit more, because remember that for our A centripetal, we know exactly what that's equal to. That was equal to V squared over R, and we actually did out the derivation to understand where that was coming from. So V squared over R gives you your centripetal acceleration, and now we want to talk about what the tangential one is related to. Note that your centripetal acceleration will depend only on the radius of the circle and whatever your speed is at that moment in time. So if, in fact, you are speeding up, centripetal acceleration isn't constant, but you don't actually have to worry, per se, about how your speed is changing. So let's now look just at the tangential component. And the tangential component can be defined as the change in tangential velocity. Now note that when we write it this way, we're explicitly not trying to talk about the direction of the velocity vector. That if we imagine this velocity vector marching along, it's always tangent to the circle. So once we call it the tangential velocity vector, really we just mean speed. We don't mean the direction, right? So this is just what speed is it going? So we need to define this, and we can use an equation that we've already learned, which is that, that this uh, linear tangential speed is equal to omega r, where again omega is our angular velocity, which now we said is changing, before it wasn't, times the radius of our circle. So we can just plug this back in for that, and now what happens? Well, when we take the time derivative of this, we note that r is not changing in time. It's constant. Omega, our angular velocity, is changing in time. If it wasn't changing in time, we would have uniform circular motion, and this would be zero. We wouldn't be talking about this. So now that we have what this time derivative is, this whole thing becomes our tangential acceleration. So the thing to remember is that this, this change in angular velocity with respect to time, is equal to our angular acceleration. So what we're left with is that the tangential acceleration is equal to the angular acceleration times the radius. And note the parallel between the equation for tangential acceleration 
with the relationship of an angular variable and the radius, and then the tangential velocity with the angular velocity and the radius. So these equations are really, really similar. Just remember that you do have to factor in the radius here, that these things are different. This also means that they have different units, that our angular uh, variables are going to have units, in the case of omega, of radians per second, in the case of alpha, radians per second squared. We are now done with circular motion, so I want to do a little bit of wrap-up. And first, let's start with the equations. So we've talked today about, in this specific video, about the constant angular acceleration kinematics equations, these three down at the bottom. And we didn't really derive them. We just said, hey, everything is looking pretty much identical to the linear kinematics equations, you just have to remember that this is constant angular acceleration. If you have a general angular acceleration that is not constant, you actually have to do integration or potentially find a different way to approach the problem. Now I do want to go back and highlight some things that we've talked about in earlier videos, but that are very helpful and will keep coming up. One is the definition of period. Period was the amount of time that it took to complete one whole rotation. And again, in general, we only talk about this in the case of uniform motion, since period itself is changing if we have an angular acceleration. And so this can be related to the radius of the circle and the speed that the object is going, again, in the case of, I'll call this uniform circular motion. Or it can be related to 2 pi and then just the angular velocity. So, and how we wrote this before was an absolute value here, since omega can be positive or negative, and period is always just positive. So do keep in mind that v in this case is just your speed, so we would also sometimes just write this as the tangential velocity. Um, the angular pos position here, theta, is what we're normally talking about, and s here is not the general coordinate that we sometimes call it, but this is the arc length. So we do use this occasionally for doing geometric type arguments or thinking something like uh, maybe a spool of twine that is rotating and you want to know how much twine has actually come off the spool. So this is, equation is only true if you're dealing with things in radians. So please remember that radians per second is the SI unit for, uh, for physics. And beyond that, some of these equations just simply won't work if you're using degrees. The next part of the summary is regarding plots, that we can make a plot of angle versus time, angular velocity versus time, and angular acceleration versus time, just like we did for the linear, uh, the linear variables. And just like the linear variables, the slope of this first plot will give you the second one, the slope of the second one gives you the third on, so on. To go backwards, you would need to integrate the angular plot to get your change in angular velocity, you would integrate your angular velocity to get your change in uh, angle. So again, this is very analogous to just what we did in the linear situation. So finally, uh, the biggest thing to know is that everything here is analogous. You can take your one-dimensional, say, x kinematics equations and just plug in theta, omega, and alpha. So that hopefully will make this easier to understand. Rotational motion, circular motion is always a little less intuitive since we deal less often with it in our everyday lives, but mathematically things look very, very similar. Um, the other thing that is a little bit tricky is that if we do have an angular acceleration, the acceleration vector of whatever point we're talking about does have a component tangential to the motion in addition to the centripetal acceleration, which is radial, perpendicular to the motion towards the center, and that's always there.